once again here to relieve you from Bahamas snorkel diving. After five years of building my own YouTube channel and to refit my boat along the way, the time was finally in place to set sail for my biggest adventure in my sailing career. I wanted to sail around the Norwegian Sea alone. Starting from my hometown of Haugesund, my plan was to reach all the way up to beautiful Lofoten to get into position, ready to take the big leap into the huge Norwegian Sea and hopefully make landfall on the volcanic island of John Mayen. Further on, the plan was to reach Greenland, but icing made it a little too dangerous. So the course was set to the enormous fjords of Iceland to experience the raw nature being unfolded. From here, the course was to be set into familiar waters through the Faroe Islands, Fula and Shetland before sliding along over the good old North Sea to find my berth back in Haugesund. A 2,400 nautical mile journey was completed. That's it. Since I were a child, I have always loved to be told stories. Now let me tell you mine about sailing around the Norwegian Sea. In chapter 1, I sailed all the 670 nautical miles from Haugesund and up to Lofoten, visiting the beautiful tiny island communities northwards along the Norwegian coast. Ending up in the incredible island of Varøy. Along chapter two, here we go. I took a deep breath before plunging into the huge Norwegian Sea for a five-day sail and another 490 nautical miles to get all the way out to the spectacular volcanic island of Jan Mayen. After an unforgettable stay, so long for now, I was ready to head into chapter three sailing the windy, challenging 360 nautical miles from Jan Mayen to the amazing Seydisfjord on Iceland. I feel like I'm sneaking myself into another man's country. After some days of relaxation, getting beaded for three days in harsh weather, I was now ready for another tough 300 nautical miles of ocean sailing. I was heading for the Faroe Islands. On a sunny day in beautiful Seydisfjorden, I was preparing to set off for the Faroe Islands. The next weather window was opening already three days after arriving. Although it was a very windy one, this was the only chance to sail before a series of low pressures would set in and force me to stay put on Iceland the next seven to ten days. So I was ready to give it a go. All right. So that's me ready to take on the North Atlantic over to over to uh, Faroe Islands. So it's going to be a windy one. The first 12 hours, then it's going to be a little better. I hope after that. So now I'm just going to go for three three reefs in the main, and I'm uh, going to slide out to fjord and. Uh, See what's in it around the around when I get uh, outside of shore. It's, it's probably going to be bumpy. Okay, let's go. With some mixed gut feelings regarding the weather outside, 
I slowly proceeded out towards the open ocean. That's uh, us leaving this beautiful fjord and uh, just outside our return towards Tower Islands and, uh, and uh, I'm thinking about the sea condition out, out there but uh, there's only one way to find out huh? more or less curled between my legs. I had to accept that King Neptune had no plans of letting me reach Faroe Islands anytime soon. This meant that I was stuck in Sedisfjorden for the next week or so. Cheers. And by doing what I do best while waiting in port, it came clear to me that I had time to really start exploring this island. Already next morning, I rented a little car and drove along miles and miles of roads through some desert-looking landscape until I reached my first destination on East Iceland. Stödlagir Canyon is known for its basalt column formations and reckoned as the most beautiful columns in Iceland. This marvel has been underwater until a huge nearby water dam was built and the water level in the river was remarkably reduced. And the result is astonishing. We proceeded along the endless roads, driving by a lonely cafe for some snacks to go, until arriving the next marvel. The first thing that gives away this location is a hissing noise followed by a strong smell of fumarol and sulfurous gases. Verir, also known as Lake Myvatn's geothermal area, is our Earth's natural steam vents. The smoke from all the boiling vents can be seen from miles away and the landscape looks to be from another planet. Apart from the insane concentration of flies, 
This is an extraordinary and unreal experience. And to feel the heat around these outlets really reminds you of the sheer power of Mother Nature. Traveling around and exploring one Icelandic mind-blowing scenery after another got me thinking that this was all possible with the help of a strong, mighty little sailboat. Sailing is definitely the best way to explore our world. On my way into the volcanic wonders, I passed Mjökivatn. This beautiful lake is surrounded by lava-made formations and crystal clear waters, and is also a very nutritious place for bird life. After a while, the landscape started to change a bit. I could hear the strong sounds of white water. As I passed the river of Skjalfandafljot, there was no doubt I made it to the waterfalls of the ancient Viking gods, and that is where the name comes from. A lot of history led to the name of Gudafoss. The 30 meter wide waterfall drops down 12 meters and rushes down the river of Skjafandaflot and makes this the fourth largest waterfall on Iceland. Despite its greatness, it's still a child compared to the biggest one in which I was about to encounter soon. Along, I drove through the charming center of Husavik. One hour later, the landscape completely transformed again and I found myself surrounded by forest which again was contained between 100 meter high cliffs. The vast valley of Asbjörgi is made by the ice age 10,000 years ago and stretches 3.5 kilometers in length by 1 kilometer wide. Iceland sure knows how to blow your mind away by changing its form after every corner. I now suddenly found myself on a gravy, dusty and bumpy road. I felt bad for my little rental car putting it through all this. But Iceland is enormous and the roads are endless. So if you want to explore while you're here, you better step on it. The last marvel to be explored on my little expedition has an air-deafening roar to it. As you get closer to this beast, you'll see a cloud of water mist tossed hundreds of feet up in the air, and your body gets moist and wet as you approach. Tettifossen is the most powerful waterfall on Iceland, and with its 100 meter width and 44 meter drop, is the second most powerful waterfall in Europe. You can walk right up to the edge of it and let the roaring rumble of the enormous masses of water stir your guts. This is all experiences to be burned into my mind forever. But I was not here to drive around and sightseeing. I was here to cross an ocean. And with the weather gods finally on my side, it was time to leave Sædisfjord and enter for the time being a calm, huge Atlantic Ocean. I instantly knew I was going to miss this incredible nature. But after 10 days of waiting for the right weather, it was time to wave goodbye. So letting Iceland's first and most westerly lighthouse, Dala Tangi, see me disappear in the horizon, I was again left alone in my boat way offshore and ready for another wild ocean passage. Okay, went quite.
try it and uh, we're on our way to Faroe Islands now. I have to say thank you to Sadis Fjord for 10 uh, lovely days, maybe a little bit long days at the end, but uh, it's been really nice. And yeah, autopilot, engine, and uh, straight towards Faroe Islands. So let's take it from there. To play along with the weather gods, I went straight south to be in position when west south westerly 25 to 30 knots of gale winds would hit me on my beam in about 16 hours from now. Then I could alter my course towards Faroe Islands to get the wind nicely on a beam reach. On my way south, I would also pass the tiny little scary of Val Bakir, placed in the middle of nowhere. By sheer luck, I accidentally discovered it reading my cruising almanac. Not knowing about this treat could result in a very unpleasant surprise. Especially because I again entered a thick layer of fog. So being the adventurous soul I am, I just had to have a look at it. That's the rock. And that's us. And we're getting close. Somewhere here. Slow down. That is so cool. In the middle of nowhere in dense fog, she pops up like this. Okay, so let's get the hell out of here. Let's get on to Faroe Islands. So the wind has started to uh, occur here, <coughs> 50 knots uh, south and west and uh, I'm gonna push the mainsail and uh, alter the course towards Harrow Islands. We're going to start off with uh, taking all the three reefs in the mainsail and, uh, and uh, just to be ready for the strong winds uh, tomorrow morning in the four or five hours. It's uh, one, uh, one o'clock now, two o'clock. So we're doing six, six, uh, six and a half knots now. So that's very good. So we're keeping the course just a little bit. Uh, of the Faroe Islands, uh, so when we get down here and the strong winds comes, we have uh, a perfect angle of the wind that comes. So let's see if my plan, if my plan uh, works. Seven knots. So here we go. We are taking over two knots more power. Let's do something about it. Waves are picking up for sure. Doing eight knots. We are overpowered, so I'm going to reduce the foresail a little bit. Too much out. Ah, and the 
diesel tank is uh, full of diesel, so uh, when we heal over now, it uh, comes out the uh, drainage pipe up in here and it runs out. But nothing to do with it, so as long as we heal over it's okay. We flatten out, it will come on the, on the boat, but anyway. Bloody fell down on the floor again. Big waves. Three, four meters now. And you can really see the shape of them when it's uh, this sunny. You get all the contrast in the ocean and you really see how big it is. And uh, we are done 120 nautical miles now. Miles now. And uh, we have uh, 180 left. Very good. The boat is uh, dry, sails perfectly. Seven, eight knots all the way. The waves are coming a little bit on the stern, so they are pushing us, and we can surf. So that's beautiful. The weather is nice, as you can see. Look at this. Sunny and good. there they're starting to scratch. I said to myself I will not shave until this trip is over, this round trip. So I won't. kind of window is the one that leaks when the water really comes over the boat splashes over it uh, just drains the windows and with time they are starting to leak well I can't do anything about that now can I
some daylight. That's all good. Just to plow on. See what happens. Things are looking very good. Early next morning, the majestic islands appeared in the horizon. The wind and sea state had increased. And we were again way overpowered. So I decided to recover the mainsail. So the boat were sailed close hauled on the foresail and the mainsail sheet released to be able to take it down. That's Faroe Islands, finally! I had to take my sails down because the wind suddenly changed and straight uh, on my uh, nose, 30 knots. And it's coming down now as I get closer to land. So, just heading out, heading in uh, the fjord now and uh, then it's, uh, it's more quiet. We're looking forward to have, uh, have the boat lying leveled out. Been a rough trip for sure. So I'm gonna enjoy this. Say the truth. All right. Faroe Islands consists of a number of islands, where 17 are inhabited amongst the 52,000 people living here. There are small villages in almost every sheltered bay around the archipelagos. But the volcanic nature is what blows your mind away if you ever get here. I was planning on visiting the main city of Torshavn to have a rest. But because of our world situation we all know too well today, that didn't turn out to be a very good option. A slight change of plans. Uh, because of this uh, COVID situation, you know, you know what I'm talking about, I guess. Uh, Faroe Islands are, is turning red tomorrow. That means if I go ashore here and uh, then I have to go to car quarantine in Shetland when I get there and I do not want that. So I'm skipping Faroe Islands, I'm sailing uh, straight through it now and I am heading for uh, Faula, a small tiny little island uh, just west of uh, Shetland. Well it's not tiny, it's actually pretty big but uh, I always wanted to go there. So. Uh, I'm going to do that now. The winds are good and uh, I'm just going to hoist the mainsail and again and uh, be on my way. But that will be in my uh, next uh, episode. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this so far. I'll see you, see you next time. So long. So join me on the next and last chapter of this North Atlantic saga of sailing around the Norwegian Sea. Next time we will cross the ocean over to the magical island of Fula for a quick stop. One of the locals, Magnus, joins me on to Lurvik, Shetland, before taking on the last voyage back home to my hometown of Haugesund in Norway. If you enjoy my work, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. 
You can support me on Patreon or PayPal for future projects to come alive. And get your MBGS merchandise following the link in the video description. And subscribe to my channel for the next video. So long and take care, Eric.